Hi everyone, I'm John at Rocket Mill and I'm going to introduce you to what the other channel is and I'm going to also show you why you should really care about it. Ooh, who's seen this movie? Creepy one, right? Well, let me tell you, the other channel is damn creepy. It's the data dimension of death. And I'm going to show you how you can exercise this right out of your analytics because you definitely don't want it there. Okay. So let's get into the, the tax of, the, of all this. You'll all be fam familiar with source and mediums. And source and mediums are what comprises channels. So in your organic search channel, what happens is Google Analytics has a series of rules. And those rules are used to define what traffic goes into it. And in this case, we've got your organic, Google organic, and your Bing organic source mediums. And organic search is the place that they go into. Because Google Analytics has got rules that say, if I see medium organic, put it in there. That's great. And here's some other ones that you'll be familiar with. All good, right? Until you get down to the bottom. And it seems like you've set up a custom campaign. You've got a Brighton store. And you're sending traffic from that Brighton store in. So what does Google Analytics do about that? I'm really sorry to disappoint you. But it chucks it into the other channel. Day to death. Anyone got a marketing budget for the other channel? Hands up. We'll see that some people have. OK. So the real nub of all this is that the default channel grouping that you get in Google Analytics isn't set up for you. Google's done a great job of sorting it out for you know, all the websites out there off the shelf. But if you really want it to talk attribution properly to you, you're going to have to get your, your sleeves rolled up, get in there, and customize it yourself. So let's think about some of the other marketing activity that we do. We've got print, TV, radio. Got channels for that? Probably not. But you might have marketing activity there. So how are you going to get it into, the, into that tool? And what about paid social? There's no channel set up for that. And you might want to like, optimize your paid media a little bit harder. Like You might want to see, how does my branded search compare to my generic PPC? Well, that's not set up for you either. So you're going to have to tweak it to get there. So I've got four ways to, to do things better. Number one, you need to customize those default channels. Number two, watch out for those creepy others. Number three, create your own new custom groups for historic analysis. Because remember, once the data's in there, you can't go back in time, right? I've got a little trick to show you how you can do. It's those custom channel groups. And number four, track that offline activity. You might have thought you can't do it, but I've got a neat little bonus trick that will show you exactly how you can. So let's get into it. Number one, customizing the default channels to reflect your business. Here we've got paid search activity, right? 3% is the e-commerce conversion rate. But that's somewhat misleading. If we split this out and do the hard work and create two channels, one for generic and one for um, branded, we see that actually branded is performing four times better than generic. Who would have known? But that insight's there, but you've just got to make a couple of tweaks to get it. Now this other channel I've been banging on about, point two. We've all got a good idea that we need good data um, to do good analysis. But sometimes we forget that we also need a good model. And GA is set up using a model, a set of rules. And if you don't bend that to your will and your business, you know what's going to come out, right? We see garbage cans. That's what's going to come out. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that we're going to get perfection or diamonds, because perfection is the enemy of good, and I firmly believe that. But we should strive to always, always live up to this mantra of junk in equals junk out and try and avoid it wherever possible. So the channel setup needs your help. Let's have another look. We've got this uh, email campaign from MailChimp coming in. Nice. It's got an email medium, and that's the rule that, in this instance, GA uses to bucket it into the email group. Lovely jubbly. But hang on a second. Someone's done a bit of custom campaign tagging. They thought that they should call it e-mail. Where's it going? Yeah. Yeah. OK. I make light of this, but I found this data and, and like, you know, we've got 1.3 million US here. It's been gone into this, um, into this other bucket. Now, like I said earlier, someone's got budget for the other. Um, I don't know what happens with that, but anyway. So when we dig in a bit deeper and we look at the sources, I'm afraid to say we find a multitude of things that should be in other places. We've got social, organic, PPC, display, all attributed to other. What a nightmare. Now, some of you will recall my last talk where I talked about custom campaign tagging and consistency and how you should get this right and what you need to do. 
And I think we all need to reflect on that and go and have a quick look at it when we're looking at these sources. Now I've got a special bonus little section here for our grads. I'll share this data with you. If you can basically work out all the problems that I'm seeing here, because everyone should be sighing and groaning as soon as they saw that, then I'll do you one of my nice hibbit wraps. You may have heard the rumor that I know they've been going around this week. For sure. You find all those errors, hibbit wraps are coming. So, okay, how can we undo this damage? Say we're the unlucky custodian of this $1.3 million in the other channel. What the hell are we going to do about that? Great news. We can create a custom channel group. And this is exactly what I did. I spent about an hour, went through, I unpicked it all, I looked at what they'd done in their custom campaign tagging, I tweaked the settings, and lo and behold, we got to where we needed to be. Fantastic. And how can you do this? Well, step one, create your own new custom channel group, jump into admin, create something with like a nice title so you can identify easily like business specific grouping. Step two, make sure that the custom channel group reflects your default channel grouping which you all should have customized to your marketing activity. Step three, get those tweaks in. So if you see that custom tagging that's gone you know, haywire, make sure you amend your rules. Here we've got the email channel, the e-hyphen mail, and we've added that to the email channel. So no more problems there. It's gonna be allocated to the correct place. And the last one, number four, set up your date range, go back in time and apply the custom group. And you can see right at the bottom there, we've, we've got all the attribution out of other, and it's gone to where it should be. And I reckon that will give you a fairly different picture in terms of your marketing um, attribution and where you're going to be putting your budget. So last one, number four, the bonus section. What about this offline marketing stuff? Let's just imagine we've got a special promotion going on in our Brighton store. We've created a vanity URL called www.myshop.com slash offer. How are we going to get that attributed? Well, there's a five-step process where we can do that. The first step was to create our vanity URL. The second step was to, was to create custom campaign tags. The third step, very importantly, add store to your default channel group. Then redirect those vanity URL users to the true destination URL. And number five, rinse and repeat for all your other stuff like flyers, coupons, TV, radio, etc. And that's it. So my key takeaway from this is you absolutely can't take Google Analytics at face value. Torture it, modify your channel groupings, get them to reflect your business, and then you'll be making smart marketing decisions. Thank you very much.